Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. This footage was recorded during the streamer event for Wilds of Eldraine, so I get to preview the new set a few days before release. And today we're looking at Blue Black Fairies, a deck that features a ton of new cards from Wilds of Eldraine. At one mana we've got a couple one mana fairies with Sleep Cursed Fairy, a 3-3 with Flying and Ward 2, enters the battlefield tapped with three stun counters on it, so it's gonna take a while before we can attack and block with it, but we also have the option of paying one and a blue to untap the Sleep Cursed Fairy so that potentially gives us a mana sink if we're trying to keep up our counter spells and the opponent doesn't play into them then at the very least we can remove a stun counter from the fairy and once it no longer has any stun counters it's also a way to give it pseudo vigilance so it can attack and block at the same time and then we also have four copies of fairy dream thief a 1-1 flyer when it enters we get to surveil one potentially giving us a bit of card selection and then for two and a black we can exile dream thief from our graveyard to draw a card and lose one life so if we discard dream thief to another effect we can still get value from it in the graveyard and then it also gives us a cheap fairy to enable some of our fairy payoff cards which include ego drain a one mana sorcery target opponent reveals their hand we get to choose a non-land card from it and the opponent has to discard it so it's like a thought sees without losing us to life but it does have a bit of a drawback if we don't control a fairy we have to exile a card from our hand so we're unlikely to play ego drain on turn one and instead we want to wait until we get a fairy on the battlefield then we also have two copies of Fairy Fencing, which can be cast for X equals zero, and that way if we control a fairy, we still give an opposing creature minus three, minus three until end of turn, but we can also sink additional mana into it. So yet another spell that gets better with a fairy on the battlefield, but also something we won't be casting on turn one. But we can of course still cast Cut Down as a cheap removal spell. And then at 2 mana we've got more spot removal with Go for the Throat to round things out. And then a Spell Stutter is another awesome payoff for the Fairy deck, a counter spell that counters unless the opponent pays 2 plus an additional 1 for each Fairy we control. So even in the late game this is often still a hard counter, which is a pretty big difference with Make Disappear, which falls off a lot sooner and requires us to potentially sacrifice a creature to casualty, still playing 2 copies so we have more counter spells total. And then we've got some additional flash creatures at 2 mana. Two copies of Obira, a 2-2 with flash and flying, saying whenever another fairy enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life. And then we also have four copies of Fairy Mastermind, a 2-1 with flash and flying, can punish the opponent for drawing extra cards, as we also get to draw an extra card in the process. And then for four mana, we have an activated ability that we typically want to activate during the opponent's turn as a mana sink. That way we get to draw two cards total, and the opponent only gets to draw one. And then all this card draw can also be great to enable our Fairy Vandal, a 1-2 Flash Flying, says whenever we draw our second card each turn, put a plus on plus one counter on it, so Mastermind is potentially a way to enable it, but the more straightforward way is to curve Fairy Vandal into our Italian's Messenger. This is another great payoff from Wilds of Eldraine, a 1-3 Flyer, saying whenever we attack with one or more fairies, draw a card and then discard a card. If we discard a card this way, put a plus on plus one counter on a target fairy we control. So Messenger itself doesn't need to be attacking for this to work, and that means turn to Vandal into Messenger can result in two extra plus one counters on turn three, can also discard lands to the ability unlike Connive and still get a plus one plus one counter. Then I also have a one-off copy of Halo Forager, which is quite nice alongside maybe an Ego Drain or a Fairy Fencing once it's in the graveyard, since we can cast it paying one extra mana, so four total, and essentially flash back one of those one mana spells. Of course, in a late game could also get back a go for the throat, so not great with our counter spells, but quite nice with all the black interaction. And then last but not least, two copies of Talion the Kindly Lord herself, four mana for a 3-4 Legendary Fairy Noble with flying, saying as it enters the battlefield, choose a number between 1 and 10, and whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value, power, or toughness equal to the chosen number, that player loses two life and we draw a card. So that can also combine nicely with our discard spell, Ego Drain, so we know what the opponent's working with and we have a better idea which number to name, but Talion can also just be a nice finisher, giving us another high power fairy to close out the game and then a mana base only 22 lands total since we've got a relatively low curve can also keep discarding lands to the italian's messenger's ability and we also have various mana sinks in case we end up flooding between mastermind can untap our sleep cursed fairy and then halo forger is also pretty good in the late game and then just a lot of blue black dual lands for fixing abandoned mire and soaring city offering a tiny bit more interaction Got a couple legendaries to discount those as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a pretty unusual hand. Double Sleep Cursed Fairy, no black mana. 
But I do have a Make Disappear, which plays well here with the ability on Fairy. And then if we find Black Mana, Talion can help out. So I don't actually uh, mind keeping. Turn 1, Annoying Vermin. It's another Rat deck, perhaps. Mills us. There's my Black Mana. We'll be fine without it for a while. And a Tangled Colony, that's a good one. Messenger, the draw. So I can keep up my two mana counter spells, which is probably better than just uh, wasting one mana on a Sleep Cursed Fairy when we could activate another. So I'll take a bit of a hit. Opponent does nothing, so I'll just activate here. Could commit Talion's Messenger. I think it's safer to just play a Sleep Curse to keep up two mana. And then I could also untap the one that's already in play. So Mono Black Rats. Lord Skitter's Blessing is going to enchant one of their creatures and then draw extra cards afterwards. Might be worth Spell Stuttering, or I can let it happen if they put the enchantment on Colony I can untap Fairy, block, they get three rats. If they put it on Vermin, then blocking with a 3-3 Sleep Curse is kind of free. Yeah, maybe it's still worth letting them uh, resolve this. Now, of course, they could decline to attack. Opponent does enchant a colony. And yeah, I think I oblige. They will get three rat tokens in return, but now they don't have an enchanted creature, so Lord Skitter's Blessing may not draw them any extra cards. Could tap out for Talion, that seems risky. So we'll just keep up all our counter spells. And then, at the very least, we can untap Sleep Cursed Fairy as our mana sink. Caramonix. Yeah, that's kind of a must counter here. It's gonna find a bunch of rats. So spell stutter over make disappear. Counter unless they pay three. So definitely seeing the difference here between the two counter spells. We are taking four down to ten, so we are falling behind. But once we have a three three on defense, we'll be alright. Dark Slick enters tapped, which does make a pretty big difference too here. I guess that just means untap fairy, keep up, make disappear. And with a ward, they're unlikely to have enough mana for removal spell and the ward and make disappear. Lord Skitter, Sewer King is a good one. Can't uh, successfully counter it unless we sacrifice Sleep Cursed Fairy, but I don't think uh, we're at that stage yet. So they can keep it. I can ambush one of the rats at least. And then next turn we can play Messenger. And that can at least block some rat tokens. Okay. Obira is something else we can play at instant speed if we don't need to counter. So play Messenger. Question now is whether I attack or not. Getting a counter on Sleep Cursed Fairy is pretty relevant. That way we can block Lord Skitter with it. So I think I do attack. Also want to improve my hand if possible. Alright, go for the throat we can counter. Although now I have to be mindful since we don't get to untap the Sleep Cursed on defense. So do I still attack? Don't think I can afford to. If Lord Skitter attacks, I'll happily trade. Opponent's top decking, but they have a lot of mana available. Lord Skitter good at emptying our graveyard as well. And uh, yeah, just line up some blocks, hope for the best. They might have drawn another Lord Skitter. Nope, okay, by Reckoner Raid down to three, next turn down to two, so we're pretty close to dead. So I probably have to double spell Obira and Vandal, which we can both play at instant speed, try and reduce their number of rats. But uh, it's gonna be very close. 
Another Lord Skitter, yeah, that's a problem. Don't think I can really counter it realistically. Opponent's gonna go for an all-out attack, I'm sure. Kind of hoping our opponent attacks with everyone so we can eat some rank tokens for free. Still gonna end up taking one damage. But we're technically alive. Go for the throat answers Lord Skitter. Okay. Can I afford to attack? If I attack with one creature, then Vandal also grows, so that can speed up our clock. Because we don't have infinite time. If our opponent just top decks another Reckoner raid, it's game over. So I think I do attack with one creature at least. And then I might as well make it Obira. Find another go for the throat, make disappear Gengo now. Okay, so could also play Talion, and that technically keeps me alive. It just doesn't beat a removal spell the same way that double go for the throat does. So let's wait. This triggers beginning of combat. So in case they draw another Lord Skitter, I guess, but I don't think it makes a difference. The extra exile also doesn't really matter. And a Tangled Colony, also worth killing with Go for the Throat. So let's take out Lord Skitter now. I guess we can't cast a second Go for the Throat because of Underground River. So take our turn. Swamp is not bad actually. So I can play Talion, naming probably two. Points at 17. So if I attack with one creature, we get two counters, one from Vandal, one from Messenger. Go for the Throat kills the uh, Captain. I think I want to try and set up lethal for next turn. If this turn I can attack for uh, four damage, let's say if I attack with Vandal, opponent's at 13, then next turn we should get there. 10, 11, 12, 13 exactly. Okay. But we are dead to removal spell now. Caramonix, that's fine. Okay. Just have to go for the throat uh, captain, which has menace. Caramonix cannot find Reckoner Raid, which is technically not a rat on the front side. Just another colony, that's fine. Trigger Stallion. So yeah, this go for the throat on Captain should be game over. What a close game. Opponent's gonna attack all out, but we had it covered. Rats versus fairies, a nice way to encapsulate Wilds of Eldraine. And now we can just send the team sideways. GG's. Very good game indeed. And one life. Just make sure not to draw with the Dream Thief here. Awesome. On to the next one. This portion of the video is brought to you by Cook and Becker and their officially licensed Magic the Gathering art print collection. Their pieces include Kiora the Crashing Wave by Scott Fisher, Nissa of Shadowed Bows by Dave Raposa, Buzzery Cat by Toshiaki Takayama, Kalia of the Vast by Scott Fisher, and Bitter Blossom by Rebecca Gay. There will be two variants available for each one, 
the standard digital print and the deluxe screen print, which can come in different sizes. Each print will also come with a certificate of authenticity, and I love what they've done with the mana symbols on those. Every order of a premium print has a 1 in 10 chance of receiving an exclusive not-for-sale print of Black Lotus by Christopher Rush. This is a limited edition print run, so get yours while they're still available, and check out their website using the link in the video description, and any purchases will help support the channel, so that's always very much appreciated. And now back to the gameplay. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Dream Thief into Mastermind, turn 3 Messenger. Don't have any interaction, but we get to surveil and then eventually draw and discard a bunch. Don't need another underground river. Okay, Ego Drain I could cast, but it would be essentially my entire turn. So I'd rather just attack for one, play Mastermind. And uh, could play it main phase, but if they counter Mastermind and I resolve Messenger, I would be pretty happy, so... That's the reason to still play it in the opponent's turn, even though a counter spell is the main interaction they could have. Okay, we picked up Spell Stutter, so now I'm more in favor of check out if the coast is clear with Ego Drain and then commit Messenger next turn. So might as well Ego Drain now. Okay, opponent's also on Fairies. They've got the Prankster, which is pretty good in the mirror match their own Ego Drain, no black mana. They can play Mastermind right now. I think Prankster is still kind of the more annoying card since it's a 2 for one uh, They can also play Fairy Vandal, so I won't be able to attack with my uh, Dream Thief, but that's okay. So yeah, let's take Prankster. And then do I just attack with Mastermind? Of course we could also Spell Stutter, whatever they play here. They don't have any removal spells. The only concern would be Fairy plus Ego Drain taking away Messenger, which is kind of the card we need to keep in play. So maybe I just don't do anything. Keep Spell Stutter for their next turn. Don't want to counter Vandal and have them go Swamp 2-drop plus Ego Drain. And yeah, there's a Swamp. So now we can spell stutter successfully. Keep our messenger, which they can also remove with Artai Resurrected at some point. But we found another messenger, that's nice. So let's see here. Dream Thief could just attack by itself. If Mastermind attacks, it would trade for any of the opponent's creatures, and Mastermind's pretty good in the mirror as well. So I think it's just Dream Thief. Discarding Dream Thief, which is also good value. Opponent does also get to trigger their Mastermind here to draw an extra card. But that's okay. So next turn we could fencing the Fairy Mastermind potentially. Their fourth land enters tapped, although they do have the Spellscorn Coven available too. So they can essentially bounce my fencing back to hands. I think it's still worth killing the Mastermind before we attack, so they don't get to draw an extra card in the process. Sacks equals zero. Kill Mastermind. Opponent found a go for the throat for Messenger. Okay. So as the dust settles, just attack with the Dream Thief. Now our opponent's got a bunch of different options available. It's gonna pass a turn. So they can flash in Obira or Artai. With Halo Forger, I have the option of playing Forger, get back a one mana discard spell, but then it would Definitely uh, bounce it with take it back. So step one, probably just attack with Dream Thief. And 
and then I could just draw with the Dream Thief in Graveyard as opposed to playing into the opponent's adventure, then they're just gonna flash in Obira instead. Yeah, I think we just pass. Question is whether I play a land or not. I guess I can just discard whatever I draw of Dream Thief and threaten to activate Mastermind as well. So this is gonna be Obira end of turn. And all attacks for one. We'll take it. And draw with a Dream Thief. Okay, go for the throats. Useful, and so is cut down. So now we've got some cheaper interaction to try and clear a path. So cut down Obira. Attack would be kind of step one. Could also play Messenger if they have a response. All right, air tie. We'll see if it uh, counters or kills. Goes to counter. Okay, that happens. Draw, make disappear. Which would be nice to counter the coven, or we can just play messenger, and then still get a nice attack in, while we can. I think that's better. And then just a Dream Thief attacking for three. Okay, what to get rid of now? Make the Spears not looking great, because I'll have to sacrifice a creature to it, so maybe this just make disappear. And then counter on Dream Thief itself. Vandal also excellent alongside the messenger here. Okay, Ego Drain was a nice draw for them. Probably takes Halo Forager. Could also see them take the cheaper Go for the Throw to keep the counter spell for Forager. But nope, one's just gonna play Coven right now. So if I ditch Vandal, I can play Forager on Fairy Fencing. That kills any of the opponent's creatures. That seems good. Airtime gets in for three, I'll take it. X equals one. Get back our fencing. Cut down would also work, I suppose. Keep fencing for later on the off chance that it's relevant. And then Coven probably has to go over Obira. And line up some attacks. Could attack with Messenger and Dream Thief. Messenger puts counter on itself. And discarding Dream Thief is also good value. Opponent falls to five. Okay, big top deck coming up. Another coven, but we're empty-handed. Still a two-three blocker. Air tie attacks. So our opponent's got three flying blockers. Next turn, if I were to attack with everyone, let's say counter on Mastermind, then opponent's not quite dead, but they'll be forced to chump. So I'll take it. And another messenger's excellent. That's an extra plus one counter. So definitely one on Mastermind. And then could put one on Halo Forager or another one on Messenger. That looks good. Opponent can line up some trades, but at least one's a chum block. And I don't think they can top deck their way out of this. All right, so we face a slightly different variant of the fairy deck. So as you can see, there's a lot of ways to approach it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a solid hand. One drop into Obira. Could also Ego Drain on turn two. 
but uh, let's go with the Dream Thief. And do I want a Sleep Cursed Fairy? Yeah, I guess I do. That way I get to play it alongside Ego Drain. And then we can keep up Obira and Spell Stutter, which are both instant speed. Opponent with a Thousand Face Shadow. Interesting. So, yeah, let's go ahead and Ego Drain. See what we're working with. Okay, the Goose Mother, so blue green kind of ninja ramp. So let's see, what do we take? I can block the opponent's 1 1 flyer. Goose Mother, pretty good, so that might be worth taking as a large flyer. And then we can try and counter the second one. For now, just play Sleep Cursed Fairy and pass. So definitely blocking to prevent ninjutsu. And our opponent's going to run out Goose Mother for X equals zero. Makes sense. Okay, can I keep up all our instant speed plays, including untapping Sleep Cursed Fairy, drawing with a Dream Thief, countering or playing Obira, which is probably the most likely scenario. Although our opponent does get to Ninjutsu the Prosperous Thief to pick up Goose Mother again if they'd like. So that's a reason to just flash an Obira and block which I'm not hating. Yeah, let's just try that instead. Can definitely see the synergy with Goose Mother and the various ninjas. Okay. Could hang on to Soaring City, but probably better to play it. That way we can untap Sleep Cursed all the way potentially, or keep up Spell Stutter. Now, if I trade for Prosperous Thief, then, um, of course, we don't have any pressure left in play, which is a concern. On the other hand, if our opponent connects, they start getting ahead on mana, and Spell Stutter gets worse. But I might still be able to cast it this turn. So I'll take three. And hope they run out something expensive, such as a Tortoise. Okay, so Sleep Cursed Fairy gets to untap, pick up Make Disappear. So I can attack for three, turn this into a bit of a race, and then keep up Make Disappear or draw with the Dream Thief. But yeah, if our opponent's got some heavy hitters like Goose Mother left in hand, so we're gonna be in trouble. It's gonna be another ninja, the hacker. This is not the updated alchemy version, so it doesn't get to scry before drawing at least. So, already didn't assign any blockers, so it's not like I can untap the fairy and try and ambush it now. It's too late. What's next? Thief, which I could make disappear, but only if I sack fairy, which doesn't seem worth it. So that resolves, and then I'll just draw with a dream thief. Mastermind's good, and so is go for the throat. All right, so we have an answer for Prosperous Thief now. Sleep Cursed also keeps the hacker in check. So we can pass a turn. Just Prosperous Thief attacking. Probably fine to go for the throat now. Before no blockers are declared, and our opponent can pick it up with Ninjutsu. And a tortoise, which I could make disappear, but again would have to sacrifice my fairy. So at this point I think we just try and outrace it, hope they don't mill a bunch of creature lanes. But uh, they're probably playing the four restless vine stock, I believe is the name. Can flash and mastermind. And Talion was an excellent pickup. So can hit for five, play Talion. And then what to name here. We've seen a bit of the opponent's deck already. I'm tempted to name maybe five for Mightstone and Weakstone, which could kill Talion. Could also name a smaller number. 
But let's name five. Possible or opponents of the Storm in the Festival deck, and I could have named six. Ooh, Cityscape Leveler. Luckily, weren't able to unearth it. So, they might have a Ninjutsu creature here. Either way, I'll block the Tortoise. And yeah, Prosperous Thief, pick up Hacker. Make a treasure. But our opponent's going to be dead in the air here. So they're going to try and draw into an answer. Triggers Mastermind as well. I guess if they top deck the Might Stone and Weak Stone, they could still technically survive. They would lose two and then take five. But no, it's going to be a Goose Mother instead. Cast for X equals two instead of X equals potentially three to play around Talion's ability. Okay, so our opponent's got some blockers lined up now. Don't have any great attacks, and our opponent can unearth a leveler, which gets around our counter spell. So this is kind of a disaster. If I attack all out, what happens? They block tally and take five down to three, but then leveler's gonna decimate my board. Yeah, this Goose Mother was a pretty powerful top deck. Can try to draw with Mastermind, see if we can find something to answer the Goose Mother to just cross the finish line. Maybe that's my best uh, hope here. And a Fairy Fencing will do it. X equals 1 is just enough to kill a Goose Mother. I guess her opponent can sack a food now to survive, but that beats just uh, dying, I guess. So yeah, if I attack, opponent sacks food up to 11. Then they still have enough mana to unearth a leveler for 8. But then they wouldn't necessarily have enough mana to get back Prosperous Thief, which would make the difference between 10 and 11 damage next turn. So if they have a land, I would be dead if I attack all out. But if I don't attack all out, then our opponent isn't forced to sack the food token now. So I don't think it gets any better for me, really. So what a close game. Runs 11, down to 3. Do they have a land? If so, we should be dead here. Because they can unearth and then still have the mana for ninjutsu. Just an attack from the hacker, so they're not going for a leveler. Hacker gets to draw. Discards Thousand Face Shadow, and Mastermind finds a cutdown. And yeah, now leveler is too late. Wow, what a close game here. One mana, one life, either way. Very, very close. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with uh, a hand that's lacking some cheaper fairies. So we're going to struggle to enable Ego Drain and Spell Stutter. But on the other hand, I also don't really want a Mulligan. We've got three lands, so we're close to casting Talion. And we just need a cheap fairy, and this hand will look a lot better. Could always cast Ego Drain in a pinch, but don't want to exile a card from hand. So we'll wait, opponent on Jund. For now we can Spell Stutter, whatever scary 2-drop they might play. The Cottage, also a great addition from Wilds of Eldraine. And the Creature Lands can certainly make a difference in a grindier matchup like this one. Second Cottage, and Scoundrel. Yeah, let's just Spell Stutter. Slow down their mana development a little bit. Now I can play Obira, and potentially Ego Drain main phase. Could be okay, but they're likely going to have a fistful of removal spells. But I guess it's fine if they kill Obira. If they have, let's say, a Shield Root, I can answer it with Go for the Throat. So maybe going main phase Obira, Ego Drain is fine. Don't want them killing my only fairy in response to an Ego Drain, that would be kind of awkward. Okay, double Gruff Triplets, so that's their top end card. Troll can also find one of our creatures. They had the Cutdown and the Huntsman's Redemption. Okay, that's a pretty good hand. If I take Troll, at least they don't have a clean answer for Talion. Although it's still going to be an uphill battle against uh, Triplets. Just going to try and close out the game before they get to it, I guess. 
So yeah, let's take the troll. Does mean they get to double spell, redemption, and cut down, which is pretty effective. But hopefully Talion can carry us to victory. Because once they have a troll in play, they could easily take out Talion. I guess we had to go for the throat for troll. So maybe there was a better sequence somewhere. But uh, yeah, for now, this seems fine. Choose, I guess, six. Could also choose two in case they find another cheap removal spell. Our opponent could also sacrifice the beast to get another troll with the second chapter. But unless they also have a fifth land, they won't be able to play and activate the troll. But maybe I name four. And then hope they don't get to fight Talion. And then next turn I'll have Go for the Throat available. As well as Spell Stutter. Yeah, let's name four. Go for the Throat. Not a great answer to the triplets, as you can imagine. So our opponent does go digging. And we'll see if they have a troll they can find. Without a land to fight right away, it's not a big deal. Opponent gets a Dread Knight. Okay. Plays the adventure to draw and lose one life. And plays the Dread Knight, so... We've got the first triplets covered with Spell Stutter at least. I can keep my fencing and go for the throat for the cottage in case that gets uh, frisky. Can cut down the Dread Knight right now, or we can wait for them to target it with the Redemption. Both are reasonable. So yeah, maybe I just cut down the Dread Knight. Still have Spell Stutter available. And if they want to use the Adventure, they're not adding more to the board. That one's going to use the adventure again. So pretty happy with that outcome. Means we get another turn of uh, Talion attacking them before the triplets come down. Sword, I guess now gets an extra counter, so that's the downside of waiting on the cutdown. Fair enough. Naming two on Talion also would have worked out pretty well. But uh, yeah, playing around Troll I think still made sense. So, do we want to kill one of the opponent's creatures? I might as well use my mana. So let's fencing. And then take out the cell sword. Still have go for the throat for one of the cottages. Hit for three. Probably fine to play Dream Thief to add to the pressure. Don't need Swamp. So opponent's not attacking with Cottage, likely playing the Triplets. And I'll take three. We've got a three turn clock in the air, so we want to try and preserve that. And try and punish them for casting expensive six mana creatures. Counterspell is definitely the best answers to the triplets, and I guess uh, sweepers can also be effective, but don't have those. So we can hit for four. Play Dream Thief. And don't need Shipwreck Marsh. So we have yet to trigger Talion. Opponent's got a The End, which I guess does trigger Talion here at least. So we get to draw a card. No counterspell, sadly. So, yeah, they get to grab all my copies of Talion. Also means they didn't add the triplets to the board this turn. So double Dream Thief might go the distance. Just gotta keep go for the throat for Cottage so they can't gain any life with the food token it generates. Take three. I'll take uh, Messenger off the top. That would be a pretty sweet draw. Vandal, not bad either. Messenger is a reason to keep an extra land in hand in case we can discard to keep a spell. But the game's likely going to be decided before that matters. It 
If I take 3 down to 11, opponent plays triplets, they've got 12 power worth of tramplers, and killing one of the triplets is not going to help. Plus they could also activate cottage next turn. So I'm probably going to have to just get lucky and find a card draw effect to go with the Vandal. Or some other way to get one damage in. So maybe I should just go for the throw to Dread Knight now. That way if they go with triplets, then they don't have lethal with triplets plus cottage attacking. And if they lose one life to the adventure for some reason, then Vandal can also kill them. Now they might have enough mana for double cottage activation if they have an untapped land left. Okay, play Vandal and hope for Messenger off the top, just a land. So we can put them to one. And then, yeah. They can animate cottage, put us to one on the backswing. Thrill Seeker, I guess, is just game over here. Counters on triplets, they can sacrifice it to the uh, ability and pump the other triplets in the process. Alright, pretty sweet finish here from the Thrill Seeker triplets deck. Just needed one more damage to close out the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a reasonable start. Good Dream Thief into either Obira or Mig Disappear. Just hoping to find some more spells afterwards. And a discard spell could come in handy. For now, play a Dream Thief. And don't need a land. Opponent's Black White with a new Restless Fortress. Turn 2 Hopeful Vigil makes a Knight. So they might be playing a Bargain deck. Looking to sacrifice some tokens, artifacts, or enchantments. For now, just hit for 1. Keep up, make Disappear and Obira. And then next turn we can maybe double spell 2-drop plus Ego Drain, or get our Messenger going. I'll take 2. And we'll flash an Obira end of turn. Opponent had to go for the throat. Spell stutter the draw. So we could check out their hand with an Ego Drain, keep up a counter, but then it's going to be another two turns at least before I can play Messenger with counter spell backup. So I'm kind of tempted to just slam down the Messenger and hope they cannot remove it so we can get ahead. And then if it does stick around for a turn, we can protect it with two counter spells. Let's give that a try. At the very least, I get a plus one counter here. And I can discard a land. The argument for putting counter on messenger is that it would survive cut down as a 2-4. But probably better to spread out our wealth. Opponent's got a shield rate, that's a good one. Can certainly punish our card draw from messenger. So sad we didn't get to counter that. So step one, probably ego drain, see what they're working with. So a bunch more removal, including go for the throat. Braids can also be quite effective, but that's easier to counter. So I'll grab the go for the throat. And then I think I'll be forced to attack, even though it's going to hurt with Shieldred out. What I could do is just attack with a Dream Thief, put counter on Messenger so it can hold off the Knight at the very least. Although I guess it does an okay job blocking right now. Yeah, we'll just send in Dream Thief, put counter on Dream Thief then. Alright, found our removal spell, excellent. So land can go. And then Shieldred's gonna trigger. Wouldn't be able to take out Shieldred unless we tap out, which I don't think we want to do. So instead I can pass and then we can um, keep up a counter spell and then next turn take out Shieldred, potentially before our draw step. Virus Beetle to make us discard. So, I 
think we lent that resolve. Discard, make disappear. Keep spell stutter for braids in case they have another land in hand. And if they don't play braids, I get to end of turn fencing kill shieldred. Another hopeful vigil. So I don't think we care. I can fencing x equals 2 kill shieldred. And then we still have a spell stutter in hand. Cut down can also be useful. So definitely attacking with Dream Thief and then now maybe counter on Messenger so it can hold off the 2-2 two -two Knights. And go for the throw, it's going to be better than cut down. So we can just go for the throat braids and keep spell stutter if that's what we want. So right now spell stutter counters unless they pay four. But uh, yeah, we can just take out braids before it gets a chance to trigger. And keep spell stutter in case they remove some of our key fairies. Or in case another shielder shows up. Okay, this is a nice one to discard since we can still use it out of the graveyard. Still just attacking with Dream Thief, but now it can pick up an extra counter. And we'll discard Dream Thief, I think. Keep cut down. This we can also activate at instant speed. Opponent can sacrifice Vigil just to scry two. They're going to activate Fortress, which is a nice one to cut down here. So let's do that. Do we wait for them to attack all out? Probably don't want them draining us for two. And then we can still use Dream Thief. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So we'll be able to not quite kill them next turn, but uh, we definitely have it under control with a counter spell in hand. All right, so we got to see our blue-black fairies in action, and overall the deck has some pretty powerful tools from Wilds of Eldraine. Is it going to be good enough to compete on the standard ranked ladder? That's an entirely different question, since of course we're facing some Wilds of Eldraine themed decks right now, and it's not quite the same as playing on the ranked ladder. But uh, yeah, the deck definitely has some neat tools, especially with the fencing being a one-mana removal spell can help out when facing those aggressive decks. But at the same time, we can also turn the corner pretty quickly with the messenger growing the team and uh, also has a lot of synergy alongside cards like Fairy Vandal. So overall, definitely a deck that has potential. We'll still have to fine-tune it a little bit to find the perfect build, but I've been pretty happy with this one so far. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always... Have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.